Hello everybody, welcome to this episode of Mushroom Wonderland. My name is Aaron Hill. You're in on this episode. I want to show you a little bit of microscope work I did on summer chanterelles. I keep talking about summer chanterelles. I made quite a few videos about them over the years. Um, a few different species will be fruiting here in the Pacific Northwest. On the West Coast, we only have a little bit of a fruiting in the summer, but typically chanterelles come out in the fall. So I pick these usually in July. The last couple of years I've been finding them growing in June even. And they rarely get any bigger than maybe two inches around. Um, um, but you can find quite a few of them. And they do have like gills on them. They seem pretty developed, but very small in morphology compared to the ones in the fall. So one thing that's always been curious to me is if they are producing spores during the summer flush because it's just such a short fruiting relatively you know these little i call them butter sponges or little love nuggets they're just little tiny uh, chanterelles that pop up in june and july but typically there's not enough moisture to really sustain them long oftentimes they'll get some green mold starting to grow on them after a couple of weeks so they don't have a huge long shelf life growing in the woods there they usually kind of recede um, and dry up and you don't really see them in August or most of September and then usually around the end of September or October the fall rains start and then a lot of chanterelles start growing and they're much bigger much more full of water much more developed morphologically so I was just curious if these little little nuggets these little dry chanterelles in the summer are they even producing spores um, because there's such little hymenium that mean, meaning like um, spore producing surface like the gills and so I decided to take uh, one of these little tiny chanterelles dry it out and I put it on the microscope to see if I could see any spores and so basically uh, this is what it looks like when it's dried out I take this tiny little mushroom and I'm going to take a razor blade and just very lightly cut off the edge of one of the gills um, underneath the cap of this golden chanterelle. Some people call them false gills, some people call them veins. I'm just gonna call them gills for ease of explanation uh, because they te technically are a gill. It's a structure produced um, by the fungus to um, produce basidia. So this little fold underneath the cap, it's not exactly like a little piece of paper like a lot of gills on a lot of the fleshy mushrooms, but these are definitely producing uh, basidia on them. So um, I'm just gonna call them a gill. So anyways, I'm gonna take this razor blade, I'm gonna cut a really, really thin little piece off the edge of that gill, super thin, the thinner the better. I need to be able to put this on a microscope slide and put a drop of KOH, that's a wetting agent. You could just use water or rubbing alcohol and um, it's gonna rehydrate this piece of fungal tissue which is gonna make it quite a bit bigger. And if it's big enough, you won't be able to get the cover slip down tight on it. There'll be like air bubbles and stuff under there. So when you're looking through a compound microscope, like the one that I'm using, you have to have a super small piece of material so that a cover slip can lay on top of that microscope slide, sandwiching that little piece of tissue um, in that liquid so that you can see through it. Um, that's one thing about compound microscopes is that the light comes from underneath and it actually needs to shine through that material in order to see those fungal structures. So it has to be super duper thin. So I cut this little piece of gill off, I put it on the microscope slide and I'm going to put a drop of KOH on there and it's going to rehydrate. Then I'm going to put this cover slip on top and I'm going to use the back of my tweezers to kind of smash it down ever so lightly so as not to break the glass or completely smash the fungal specimen, but to just kind of spread it out onto one focal plane so that I can see um, the fungal structures. And when I put it into the microscope, I was delighted to see there were a lot of spores coming off of this little piece of fungal tissue. So this really super minute little piece of tissue that you can barely see with your human eye um, has quite a lot of spores on it. That meaning that just one of these little tiny dried mushrooms is making probably millions of spores and there's a lot of these little mushrooms in the woods. I was excited to see the spores so I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like when you're looking at the gill edge of a chanterelle 
uh, summer chanterelle um, in the microscope. So um, right here in this first picture, so right here in this first picture, you can see the fungal tissue up in the upper left corner of that picture. And then all those little strands, those are actual hyphae. That is the fungus itself. So the mycelium is made up of hyphae and that's those little strands of fungal material. And at the very end of them, a lot of them are what are called sterile cells or cystidia. And then this is the region where basidia also grow uh, right on the edge of growth and that's where the spores get produced so you can see some spores that are kind of floating off in the liquid away from the um, fungal tissue and right there in that picture it looks like i'm seeing about 11 or 12 spores just in this super small little section of microscopy and this is at 400 times magnification so now we're going to go to the next picture another picture of more spores and you can see the spores are kind of like bean shaped. They're uh, ovoid, you know, sort of somewhere between a pumpkin seed and a pinto bean. Um, and there's nothing really super significant about them. This particular picture doesn't have a great focus on them, but again, you can just see some spores that are moving away from the fungal tissue there. Um, in this next picture, we can start to see basidia arranged on the edge of the gill. Um, in really good clarity. Uh, this was a cool shot of a really nice cross section of the edge of that gill. And if you look down, it looks like a bunch of like little balloons that are um, floating up above the fungal tissue. And those are actually the spores that are connected to the basidia. So let's look at the next picture. There we go, a little bit more clear. And on the bottom, you can see where it says C. formosus. That means Cantharellus formosus. For the Pacific Golden Chanterelle and um, I'm familiar with rainbow chanterelles I'm familiar with white chanterelles these ones are certainly just golden chanterelles they do grow in the summer as well so anyways I just have to say that because a lot of people want to like argue about it or something and mushrooms from this patch have been DNA confirmed they are Cantharellus formosus growing with Douglas fir and Western hemlock out on the coast and up in the mountains where there's a lot of spruce. You can find rainbow chanterelles and I actually put some of those in the microscope too and they're slightly different from the golden chanterelles. And then there's white chanterelles which are pretty, pretty obviously different but I'm not gonna talk about that right now anymore. I'm gonna look at this picture and it says Basidia developing spores and those little balloons that look like they're floating there. If we are to zoom in, you start to see the little structure just beneath it. And there are little like arms coming off of that structure. Well, that structure is called a basidia or the basidium. That's just a singular for the basidia, which is plural. And then there's those little arms that are extending out with the little spore structures starting to grow on them. Some of them very young in the background. You can see some really undeveloped spores. Up in the foreground, some, some much more developed spores. Those little arms are called sterigmata or sterigma. Each one is called a sterigma, but in plural, we're, uh, we would say sterigmata. Then let's go to the next um, picture. And yeah, this one, uh, same thing. Spores still attached on the basidia, so there you go cool picture. I really like how that one turned out. And you can see the melanin, the pigmentation in that fungal tissue is kind of an orange color, just like the, the uh, chanterelle itself. So as we go to this next picture um, and we look kind of close, we can see the hyphae. And those are the actual strands of fungus. Um, and nothing super significant in that picture. I was looking for something called a clamp connection. And I think I see one here in this picture. Yeah, definitely. So right there where the red arrow is pointing is called a clamp connection. And that's where um, two strands of hyphae are connected by, uh, you know, it's basically two chambers in the hyphae that are separated by this thing called a septa. And then just on the edge of the septa is this little structure that connects the two segments. And that is called a clamp connection. And um, you can see one right there. They often just look like a little bump on the side of the hyphae. So um, in a lot of mycological microscopy literature, it's going to refer to having clamp connections or not. And so that's kind of what you're looking for there. 
On this next picture, I was surprised to see the smiley face. Can you believe that? Look at that. That's an actual picture. I did not doctor that or anything. That's just, I don't know, maybe bacteria or something within the cell wall of that particular cell. And it clearly looks like a smiley face. So I guess that was a happy chanterelle. That was pretty cool. I was happy to see that. Let's go to the next picture. Ooh, now we start to see a basidia really clearly. That was a nice shot. And you can see all these little granules in the spores uh, that are developing on the sterigma there. And uh, that's a pretty cool picture of a basidia. Um, <clears throat> and we will go to the next picture. And here is a depiction of all of those different fungal structures. So there's the basidia right in the center. That's the whole cell. Um, it's a cystidia that's sexualized, basically. And then there you go, the sterigmata. That's those four arms coming off of the basidia or the sterigma themselves. And then you can see the spores. And there's an obvious spore wall and then all that granulation. And a lot of spores have different uh, ornamentation and things on them. Oftentimes some oil droplets in there with um, some nutritional um, substance in there so that when the spore actually germinates it has a little bit of a food resource to get itself started which is really pretty cool but that's a nice close-up of the basidia and then again this next picture there's cantharellus formosus basidia with four spores so typically basidia produces four spores some of them just two spores like your grocery store button mushroom agaricus bisporus bispore meaning two spores per basidia um, but these ones clearly four spores growing on that structure and that's a really nice shot of the basidia. And so there's a quick little video of some fungal structures looked at through the microscope and it did prove um, what I was wanting to know. It's fun to like have a question and then be able to kind of do the science and discover for yourself things like this. That yeah, even though these chanterelles are little and compact and they're dry and they kind of look different, um, they don't seem like they're doing much out there. They're definitely producing spores and putting their spores out there. Now, how long can these spores last in the dry environs of summer until the rain comes? Probably the entire time. I mean, you can dry spores and, uh, and fire them up on agar years later. So spores are maybe more like pollen than they are like seeds because it takes a couple of them to sexually mate before anything really happens, but that's for another video. Anyways, I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like to take a little summer chanterelle, take a super small little piece of the hymenium or the spore producing surface, put it in the microscope, and then look at some of those structures and confirm that they're spores. You know, it might be a little bit reassuring to you if you do pick a bunch of these summer chanterelles that they have already put a lot of spores out into the environment. So happy picking out there. I hope you subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit the notification bell and I'm just gonna keep coming up with videos and especially here in the summer, we get a little creative. So let me know if you like this kind of video about microscopy. If you wanna help support me, you can go to the links in the description, all the other social medias. You can find Mushroom Wonderland there. You can buy some merch at mushroomwonderland.com or help support me on Patreon for a $5 pledge. That would be super awesome. But uh, you don't have to do any of that. You can just watch my videos here and uh, hit the like button and we'll see you on the next one. Much love everyone. Peace out.